What's up, DigiDestins? Today we have Yellow Hybrid Shine Greymon. We're doing a little bit differently today as I wanted to try out something more with the side decks as well. It might not be official. Great for testing, but to get everybody ready for DigiFest, I figured having some deck lists with some optimal sideboard text that might help out. It's not the end all be all, but We'll go over it further as the video goes on. So let's further ado. Let's go over Yellow Hybrid Shine Greymon. So let's go over this amazing list. We have a lot of good strength and we have a lot of weaknesses for this deck as well. They kind of level each other out because with the restrictions and the banning of Mega Digimon Fusion and the restrictions to reinforce memory boost, it did hurt the deck ever so slightly. It's still playable in its form. And it's not going to change up anything really too dramatically. It just, it doesn't have that early game pressure. So let's go over it. Strong, strong second hand in the form of security is really powerful because you can search through them with TK and Zoe, eliminating um, bricky hands that you might have, which is kind of huge in my opinion. Very little tamer hate in this game. Definitely sets this deck to be a little bit stronger but once we get into more and more tamer hate options the deck starts getting hit harder and harder especially any of the hybrid decks but we also have recovery super easy conditions to activate sometimes we can activate even just for free which is nasty and then extremely powerful boss digimon in itself that we have suzano mon sitting here and then we have extremely changeable boss monsters in the form of their lineup shine gray mon through sayoka mon through dinos mon through a bunch of them can actually do a lot of crazy things you have very interchangeable a lot of good boss digimon all in all you could tech in war yellow war gray mons you can tech in mastamons anything like that you might think might come beneficial to you is very powerful for this deck because their top end is just really good um very easy to get a late game win with just because when this deck goes off it's trying to stall to the late game and then once it starts clearing that board with the shine gray mons or shutting you down with it's all its recovery aspect you're going to get that win eventually you're in there for the long game and that comeback is similar to little loop where it goes for the long game not the early game doesn't mind if it loses a little bit mental momentum in the beginning as long as it can keep the board state even throughout the whole thing and cyborg can help counter issues this deck might face especially if they do continue with the cyborg it is in testing as i know and then fully interchangeable cyborg that can switch from to a yellow purple hybrid security list which i will show afterwards what cards you could easily swap in and out well swap in for a sideboard that might make purple hybrid security very viable for you weaknesses slow to get board set up otk decks that can clear its security with in four to five in one turn can leave you falling behind pretty quickly that is very massively a hindrance to us decks that just can spam out board and just go all in at once really does hurt this deck so you have to play cards that can help mitigate that and even with mulligan and testing high tamer count does cause you to have more bricky type hands even though some of your tamers are really good to be able to pull out from the security if you are too hot the tamer count is too high in the beginning you could be falling behind and even mulliganing it away might trigger you to get more of them if not you might not see any of them so it's a kind of it balances itself like a seesaw just to try to figure out what you want to do with cyborgs players can start teching in a dedicated plan and red ties in their decks to help check with our options so you have to play cautiously knowing what they're going to do because cyborg is going to be a very interesting mechanic in this game it's going to create a lot of different styles of play and different thought processes and as i said before the hit on reinforced memory boost and mega digimon fusion really made the deck lose a lot of its power and its consistency through its recovery and stuff like that and that's huge and we're gonna have to see what it does so really what's awesome about yellow hybrid is its core 
it is a yellow 18 card core it is nothing more than that so and at other times it's about 16 so you're it's so splashable engine that most hybrid decks can almost splash this in with them and it wouldn't cause any issues because hybrid functions really well with each other and the only difference is you just need to have the right tamers to digivolve on top of so being in a 16 to 18 card core in your 50 card deck is huge and then you just tech in other cards to help alleviate some issues so keep that in mind what's really nice is its draw filter engines are really good i gotta say it's got some very powerful ones we'll use upamon for if you have three or more security cards trigger draw one which we are going to be in that range a lot of the times this format so at least upamon swinging with our salamons on top of it or even if we just built a stack we're just going to gain some nice momentum and it's going to help us out a lot so keep that in mind Pokemon is a really powerful card for this deck because revealing five cards from the top of your deck add one card with hybrid in his form or 10 warrior types and one tamer among them to your hand place the remaining cards at the bottom of the deck really powerful card in the shape of you can plus two in this list and it's very easy for us to hit a tamer and we have a decent amount of hybrids to at least be hit or a 10 warrior type to be able to pull forwards into our hand so unlike other decks don't that don't play as high as a tamer count as we do we're more likely to hit a tamer so but also it has a nasty once per turn when a tamer digivolves gain to memory so a lot of your digimon that can digivolve for on top of a tamer for two will lessen its value and become free evolution and there's where jet silphie bond takes advantage of, and we'll explain that when we get to her dynasmon is really amazing in this deck so when digivolving, you may trash the top card of your deck, security stack to reveal top six cards of your deck, add one up to two level six or lower cards from among them to your hand, trash the main cards, and then once per turn, when a card is removed from your security stack, if you have three or fewer security, trigger recovery plus one. Being able to trigger recovery plus one is massive for us, being able to keep us in the game, and just constantly, now it takes two extra, every turn it's like an extra attack, that they need to have to get rid of the extra recovery that you gain and the plus advantage that you gain off is two level six or lowers you can help fix your hand a little bit with just dynasmon's evolution skill and that's really good and we have reinforced memory booster as it's a one of now reveal the top two cards your deck place one of the cards at the top of your security face down add the remaining card to your hand then place this card into the battle area delay gain three memory that gain three memory pretty much made it say plus two cards and then gain th for a three cost because even though you can use it whenever you want that's after you've played it for a full rotation it just helps out just because of how much it pluses and recovers you for just keep that in mind reinforced memory boost is nasty um tk is really good not just because of its memory um reset to three but checking all your security cards revealing one from among them add it to your hand if it is yellow card recovery plus one so we have enough yellow targets in the list to vi validate for its existence and it pretty much guarantees our security is our secondary hand and then we have zoe zoe's really good because it's her on play you may search your security stack for one card with hybrid or 10 warriors in its traits and then add it to your hand if you added a card to your hand recovery plus one so being able to add in cards really does help out and it filters in filters out the bad cards but she also has a nice inheritable with all your security digimon gating plus 3000 dp that will come up and we'll explain that later but all in all a very solid draw slash filter engine it's not like similar to other decks where it's main deck draw it's using the security as a secondary draw engine which is very powerful for us we do have plenty of you know normal draw on play to check the tops but it's mostly comes in through taking out bad cards out of our security is what's going to really benefit us next let's talk about it our removal tech options or control options 
This is Shine Greymon. Shine Greymon is one of our best boss Digimons because rest all your Yellow Tamers for every Yellow Tamer put in rest from this effect. Activate the following minus 4,000 DP to one of your opponent's Digimon for the turn. And this Digimon gains plus 1,000 DP for every Tamer in play. So he gets massively big if we have a bunch of Tamers, which we are playing a high Tamer count. So Shine Greymon's just loving it. And we'll just rest all them for the, his effect of wiping the board. And once we wipe the board, we can go in for games. Uh, we do also have Suzanomon here, who is, when Digivolving, delete one of your opponent's Digimon. But it also has Security Plus 2. And you may Digivolve this card from your hand onto one of your Tamers as a level 6 Digimon by placing 10 Tamers and or cards with Hybrid in their traits from your hand to trash at the bottom of the deck in any order. Which is huge because that recycles everything that we lost. And if we are just constantly keep playing out the game, we should be able to hit 10 very easily. And Sazanomon Digivolving for 7 on top of our Tamers, which can be easily reached with just TK, Kyrie, two of those, and then one TK on board. Boom. That is instantly, as long as we're ahead, we're now checking out three securities from our opponents, and it's just very lethal. So just keep that in mind. Wyvern's Breath, one of your opponents Digimon, get, Digimon gets minus 15 for the turn. So one of their bigger Digimons will get smaller. And then we have effects to make our Digimon bigger. So if he keeps checking, even the lowest Salomon can kill him. And that's crazy strong. And then we have TK Kyrie. It's, it's a really good setting up for the gaining memory. If you have fewer security than your opponent. But when one of your yellow Digimon attacks, you may suspend this Tamer if to have one of your opponent's Digimon get minus 1,000 DP for the turn. So it helps start removing, making the threats smaller. And it does help out ever so slightly when you're starting to swing into things. So keep that in mind. It's a very useful card. Next, let's talk about our accelerants, our memory gainers and stuff like that. We just covered a good amount of these cards, but let's talk about it. First off, Rise Greymon is a huge accelerant in this deck because when Digivolving, you may play a Yellow Tamer from your hand without paying its memory cost on play effects of, on that Tamer. Do not activate. Sadly, that makes it rough for our... If we play TKs or the Zoe, we won't be able to activate. But everybody else, all the other Tamers we play, really does help out in the long game. And then while you have three or more Yellow Tamers in play, this Digimon gains security plus one. So this keeps stacking. So if we can get Shine Greymon, that's two security checks. Or if we Digivolve it on top with a Suzanomon, now that's one, two, three, four security checks with a Suzanomon. That is huge. And that's going to clear out so much security, it's not even funny. Then we have TK Kyrie again. Like I said earlier, if you have fewer security than your opponent, gain two memory. So it's very easy for us to meet this condition because... We're just going to clear out security like it's nobody's business near the end game anyway. And then when your yellow Digimon attacks, you may suspend this Tamer to gain, give one of them minus 1000 DP. We've already talked about that, but it's just really all around just for that memory gain. And then we do have TK here for that memory setting to three, which is really big for any decks go going forwards, just because... Setting your memory to three means you're not getting choked out at once and stuff like that. And it's really hard to str struggling to get to time when you can play things if you're always at one. So having the TKs in here really does help add in that momentum that you need. And then checking all your security reveal one card from among them, add it to your hand. If it's yellow card, security plus one. So it's great for the recovery package as well, but it's just there to add cards to your hand. But that memory gain is what really makes him shine the most. Then let's talk about the recovery package slash support package that we have. We have plenty of cards that will either minus DP or add power to our security or remove checks or recovery us or just get us into from point A to point B. So first off, let's talk about Salomon. If you add three or fewer security on deletion, trigger draw one. Her goal is to die, and when she dies, that gain of memory, that security recovery is just really good. She can swing in. Hopefully, death 2000 DP is enough to get rid of her. And just being able to plus 
is nice. Then we have Kazamon. So you may digivolve this card from your hand on one of your yellow tamers as if the tamer was a level 3 Digimon. Just so that you know, if you have Pokemon with, let's say, any of your tamers, you digivolve into Kaze, Kaze becomes free. And then you can just digivolve into Jet Selfie for one with that tamer. And then boom, you're recovering plus one for one, one memory, one memory cost. That whole thing costs you because the Pokemon costs you pretty much negated the cost of the Kaze or the Zarafimon, whichever one you choose to Digivolve on top of. And then Jet Selfie is just doing her job. Then you may have, you may have this Digimon, we have Zarafimon, so you may Digivolve this card from your hand onto one of your yellow tamers as a level three Digimon for a memory cost. And then when Digivolving, if you have a hybrid in straight or Zoe, Yamato in the CG Evolution cards, all your security Digimon gets plus 3000 DP for you until your opponent's next turn. Just really powerful, adds a little bit of wall up that you normally didn't have. Uh, Jet Sylphie, I did mention her a little bit before. Um, when did you evolving? We talked about the combo with her. When did you evolving? If you have a card with hybrid and straight, if this Digimon digivolves, Digimon's Digi Evolution cards recovery plus one. Just keep that in mind. Just that free one cost evolve combo is just nasty. Then you have Sayokamon. So breeding. Um, opponent's turn when an opponent's Digimon moves from the breeding area to battle area gains security minus three. So this is just for the OTK decks that think they want to clear us out. The Greymon decks, if the um, ancient Greymon deck that wants to pull ancient Greymon from raising, or if they want to warp high up, now they can't play the high game against this thing. They have to remove it first. So minusing that security really does hurt them. And your turn, all your opponent's security Digimon gets minus 3,000 DP, making them smaller. So when we swing in with our weaker guys, more likelihood of survival is huge. Um, Dynasmon, just in there for that recovery, is really nice because it elongates the game. I mentioned him earlier in the video. Um, but when a card is removed from security stack, if you have three or fewer security, trigger recovery plus one. And then Zoe... Is in here for that opponent's turn all your security digimon gets plus 3000 dp comboed it with zarafamon that's 6000 dp so salamon becomes an 8k body in security okay or your sayokamon's now 7k in security um or you can keep stacking it up with tks and the more tks you have the bigger this is going to get and the oh my goodness <laughs> oh, this thing could make a Salamon enough to kill an Omnimon if the board state allows it. So keep that in mind. That's just how that's going to play out. Let's talk about a generic sideboard, shall we? We're going to go over Gazimon first. Gazimon's in here for the fact of countering blue decks, memory boosters, Lil Luth, and anything that gains memory through evolution or through anything that would just help gain the memory back for you doing x y's and z's except if they were tamers so if they are playing like pokemon which helps in the hybrid matchups shutting them down is really important cute mons in here for countering decks with 50 percent win rates green decks and other hybrid decks because their ultimate lines are like jet selfie mon that basically say reduce for two so it'll come in for one but now they'll have to pay the three, and that could mean passing turns if Cutemon's out on the board. Mastamon's in this generic sideboard is for your mirror matches or purple-yellow hybrid game plans or even security control. Just so that you have a better win percentage by removing security means less attacks you have to do. And then you could combo in and play a Gazi or a Cutemon to help alleviate the stress the stress that you're going to have to deal with their constant onslaught so you can just slow them down you might be able to gain some more momentum and shutting down things and putting threats on board that they have to remove is really big for you and then you have avenge kidmon for really purple bell bella star bielza star so that that's really what he's in here for just the on play boom you know I'm going to just reset the three musketeers board state. Well, 
graveyard state and then go right for the mega that that bella star itself pop it boom they're now falling behind this thing came in for cheap and it just shows how good of a cyborg tech it is against that matchup if you're expected to play a lot of belt bielsa stars so keep that in mind and now let's talk about your purple yellow security option so i know we have demi maramon in here just because the purple egg option is just a consistent way of making sure you can use your smoke screen style sword legend larger option which helps pop for every tamer on and or hybrid you get to pop a level five or lower so this could board wipe so easily on its own accord so having the ability to have your digitama be purple now puts in this weird thought process that your opponent has to come up with we also play the gazimon just to help alleviate the stress of other memory boosters and stuff like that just the same thing as we talked about earlier with gazi just the same thing but it becomes a more smoke screen style of play where your opponent has to figure out what are you doing what what what's the full game plan because being able to swap in 10 cards meet and changing up your deck into a completely different play style focus is really massive because now they don't have the same answers as they did before and now you can swap in and out left and right depending on what they try to do just have to this is going to really make or break the good players it's going to benefit the better players by miles that know how to learn how to cyborg adapt and then it's going to show the weaker players that really struggle with that kind of concept which i do feel bad yes that it's going to do that but it's just going to show who's the most adaptable in play styles so guys what do you think of the video do you like the added you know the side deck tech of the 10 cards let me know down in the comments and i'll catch you in the next video peace